Sorry about that, I'm trying to turn that down. Sorry about that, I was trying to get all these wires and stuff hooked up. I think Jerry said that it was time to like be a NASA astronaut, and then I haven't had this many wires on me since I had an EKG, so uh, good morning. Uh, Hope everybody is doing well this morning. Um, the last time I done this, this is kind of haunting. The last time I done this, I, I prepared what I had to say and I put it all on these little three by five index cards. Uh, I had my glasses, I was struggling to read the index cards. I made a movement, the index cards went flying, my glasses went flying. So uh, I was on the cuff without what I'd written. And uh, then I had to, really trust God, to trust God with the words that uh, I was going to say. And uh, when we feel that it's broke and uh, we can't go any further and uh, things are just a mess because the cars have flown, uh, the children have left, uh, we're dealing with sickness, and uh, when we come to the points where we have to trust God in our lives, that's where we find out this thing that we think is a broken mess. He heals it and just makes it a beautiful thing. So uh, I'm grateful for that time I had to trust God. Uh, this morning, uh, I feel I would be amiss this morning if I uh, were to mention the survivors of 9-11. Being that we honored the victims two days ago, 19 years has passed, and the pain and outrage seems like it was just yesterday. So we want to keep the survivors, the, the victims' families, all the first responders, their families, and our nation uh, in prayer as a whole and close to our hearts. We know all too well, being in the grips of a global pandemic, we see how the effect of things has uh, just changed our lives. There's these events that just dramatically shape our lives and uh, we do want to keep them in prayer. We have this ongoing gun violence, this uh, rage, racial divide. It seems like everybody's up in arms. We have so much separation, and when we should be locked together in arms, embracing each other, it just seems we're up in arms, and we have such a great divide. Um, football season starting back up. Colts today kick off 1 o'clock. Uh, so that's good. I guess we're starting to fall back into something that feels a little bit normal. They like to label this as the new normal to give it a term, but I've never known civilization or men or culture to have a normal. So uh, if we return to anything that looks like normalcy, or I guess it would be routine, how we lived our lives prior, our routine. So uh, let's pray that this is not our routine, this separation, this isolation. Uh, let's pray that this is not the new normal. Uh, we do want to keep in prayer all those that's lost their lives to gun violence, to hatred, to these racial injustices. Two dozen eggs, a uh, gallon, oh, sorry, that was wrong paper. <laughs> As we know, and we can feel it, and we can see it with all the chaos and strife going on in this world today, not to be too cliche, but the world needs Jesus. With an urgency now maybe more than ever, it needs God's love and mercy spilled upon it in the form of the blood of Jesus. So before I go any further, we have prayers, concerns, and give praise. So this morning, I do want to share a praise. Uh, I don't know it, but it was mentioned earlier. Jerry mentioned uh, a better life, Bree and his hope, the recovery ministry here at the church. Uh, we have stopped that for lack of participation. It seems that uh, we have a problem. And like those lost in addiction, we don't want to admit we have a problem. And it seems the families in our community, it's hard for them to face they have a problem uh, with their children or their loved ones. You know, we live in a world where we want to think, not, not us, this thing can't happen to our son, it can't happen to us, that they're better than that. But we all fell, we all turn to things that are not God, and uh, there is a problem. So 
I don't know if this chapter will reopen. We're going to leave that at the throne right now. But uh, I want to thank Brian for his leadership, for his love. Uh, my praise report is that uh, before the closing of uh, the ministry, of the recovery ministry, there was a gentleman, and we'll just call him Jeff because that's his name. So we'll refer to him as that. I wanted to keep this all uh, kind of anonymous. But uh, Jeff was doing really well for nine months. And like many of us, he slid backwards. You know, we're dealing with a different world. And to be just new in recovery and to respond to so many things, we're learning to live life and experience new emotions and take life at, 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 it, at what it has to offer. And uh, Jeff was doing so well. Uh, he had a relapse backslid, which you see too often. And uh, it seemed hopeless. Our chapter was closing. Uh, Jeff was lost and, and, and just burying his pain in substance abuse. And I, I know what that feels like. It seems like it's easier to retreat than it is to actually deal with it and reveal to others and reveal to ourselves and reveal to our God the things we're suffering with. So I get on a tangent and I'm not even reading from this, so I get lost when I return to it. So I wasn't giving up. When it seemed hopeless, and I thought, well, now, where are we going to get this love? How are we going to love our brother? What is going to happen now? I'm not going to have this meeting. I won't be able to minister to him. Uh, Brian won't be able to teach him healthy tools. What do we do now? So I continued to pray, and I was going on a walk, and uh, there's this book depository that says, if you want a book, take a book or trade a book. And on the top of this stack was an NIV with a Bible, large print. And me and Jeff, we've been in conversation about success and recovery. And I told him, I said, Jeff, I, I never felt like I was whole, like I had this recovery thing down. I always feared of backsliding, taking opiates. I still deal with a lot of pain. I may be having surgery soon for my hip is collapsed. Uh, I thought I could use that as an excuse maybe not to show up this morning, but incredibly, there's been a lot of prayer going on because I, I feel like I could run a marathon today. I mean, I've been in so much pain. I mowed the trim around the house yesterday. I, I've just done everything. I haven't relied on my cane, which is a wonderful thing, but uh, God was not letting me find an excuse to get out of this one. So, uh, back to finding the Bible. Uh, once I got the Bible out of the book exchange, I thought, this is wonderful. Somebody may need this. Somebody may need to read the Word of God and need God in their life. And at that moment, it snapped. Me and Jeff have been talking about God. We've been talking about Jesus, discussing the Bible. We've been talking about building our recovery on that solid foundation, that foundation made of the rock. Instead of building that foundation made on sand. Um, not to put down anything that helps somebody recover, but we need more than 12 easy steps. We need more than cognitive ways of thinking. We need more than tools. We need more than catchy quotes to elevate us, put away dope, give us hope. We need Jesus in our lives. So I was talking to Jeff about building this foundation on God's word. And uh, I'd been ministering to him. I wasn't giving up hope. And I, I, I found this Bible and I rushed it right over to him. We had a brief conversation. I know that uh, he would only crack his door open. He would never let me into his house. And I know it was for the shame that he was living. He didn't want to let me too much into his world. But I wasn't going to keep my witness out of his world. So we could talk. I handed him his Bible. He seemed to really appreciate receiving this. I think what he appreciated more than anything was that people still cared. He'd given up, but we hadn't given up. So we talked briefly. I didn't know what was going to come of this. 
I told him how I began to study the Bible and how it started to make sense to me that uh, I started in Acts, and I would read the book of Acts, and it pretty much covers uh, Jesus' ministry on earth. It uh, covers the work on the cross and all that, and Acts was inked by Luke. So I told Jeff, I said, start in Acts, you'll get an overall synopsis of the Bible, and then turn to Luke, and that's where you can start in the Gospels and just get an idea of the author of Acts and get an idea of these things. And I really cared about how he read the Bible, what he was going to get out of the Bible. I prayed and prayed, and so many of us have, and uh, he received that Bible very openly. And uh, my praise report is, uh, out of all that hope, I get a phone call Friday from Brian that uh, Jeff has went into re rehab. He has uh, decided to take that extra step and go get clinical treatment and rehab. And uh, I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure as Jeff goes into rehab, that Bible will go with him. But I am certain that our God will be there with him. Because he's with us all in our time of weakness, wanting us to do so much better. Now I'm going to return to the paper where I find myself at a loss for words. I do want to thank Brian for his constant care, for never giving up on any of us. There are times we give up on ourselves. But Brian, I know that's the spirit that works through you. And just that kindness and that care for your fellow man. So, everybody, uh, I know we don't do this because we don't live in pride, but let's give Brian we have a little round of applause for the support he does give for recovery now. Thank you, Brian. I love you. Because I know, as they said, being in this rehab facility, that he was sick and sobriety. God offers so much more than sobriety. God offers salvation and eternal life, and that's what he really wants to do. That's why he sent Jesus to take the hit for us and to die on the cross to give atonement for our sins. Because we can't do this alone. We need human compassion. And most of all, we need that spirit of God that comforts us, that strengthens us, and that's there with us through all things. I know that through prayer, God can take this taste of alcohol and substances out of Jeff's mouth as he has removed the taste of opiates out of my mouth. I have been addicted to pain medication for 13 years. And uh, I don't get shooting pains, like a threshold. There's a pain threshold, and you know when you've reached it, it's like more pain than you can take. It's pain that just knocks you out of the game. And it used to be when I hit that threshold, or maybe even before I hit that threshold, my immediate response was Medicaid, mass this problem, to just drown my pain and with these opiates and these pain pills and with all these poisons. And I learned as I was drowning my pain, I was also drowning emotional pain along with physical pain. I became quite addicted to this not dealing with life and this escapism. But it's been five years. God has taken the desire for me to take any type of opiate, the desire to uh, cover up this pain, I deal with this pain. I, I take a lead. I, I, I rest. And I will seek medical attention. Because this body will fall to the wayside. And I just pray that God strengthens our spirits as our bodies weaken. And I know the God that took the, pain, the taste of pain medication out of my mouth will remove that taste of alcohol from Jeff's mouth. For the same Jesus that turned water into wine in his first miracle. We'll take the wine and turn it into water for our brother Jeff. Amen. So, uh, the first time that we are asked to 
two pulpit fill in. We are asked to do it in a form of what's called our faith story. And it's really formulaic. It, it, it entails our, our lives prior to our relationship with Jesus, how we come to know Jesus, and our lives after coming to the cross. And after I thought about it, and I've listened to so many people's faith stories, I thought, well, this is not our story. This is our witness. This is our witness to God. And it dawned on me, if we're going to live and live the witness, we need to have a worthy, a worthy witness. Not just one where it's a winter morning and the window's open and we're looking out the window and the snow's falling and we get on Facebook and we put on a meme and we tell all of our friends, it's snowing, it's snowing. Okay, everybody can see it's snowing. That's kind of a witless witness. That's not a worthy witness. But we need to have that, that witness with urgency that we're not alone. As Jerry spoke about being alone and, and all the others that's alone, when they know Jesus, we turn to the Lord, we turn to prayer. Maybe we'll listen to a sermon on TV, and that, that Holy Spirit comforts us and lets us know that we're not alone. We may think of the loved ones that's passed on before us and just long to shed, the, shed this flesh and to be with them. And that's what God offers us. Uh, in all the events I discussed, for the next generation, we get it passed down by witness. History, tragedy, but witnessing even historical events or traffic accidents, there are different type of witnesses. We have reliable witnesses, which is also can be known as eyewitnesses. And we also have what is known as a credible witness, which may not be an eyewitness, but this is a witness considered valuable based on their merit and honesty. We usually receive this witness from a reliable witness who is a first-hand witness or an eyewitness. And then once they pass that witness along to somebody we trust through their merit, we tend to believe them before, because they have dealt honestly with us. I always find it humorous when a news crew seeks out a witness for an event that happened, whether it be a tornado or something. It seems the reporter will look through the crowd, find just the most outrageous looking person with maybe a rebel flag on his shirt, holding a can of Bud Light, or somebody with blue hair way on top of their head, and their lips are painted blue. And they ask him to witness to the event, and it'll be like, yeah, I'll tell you, I was sitting over there by the potatoes and the wind just went a whirl. And I don't know why they do that, but it's so funny that they do this. And uh, there are eyewitnesses, so we consider them reliable witnesses, first-hand accounts. So, I got ahead of myself, excuse me. To tell you the truth, I was up till 2 o'clock in the morning putting this together, and we feel we have it polished. Just as we do live in our life, we're putting together our worship, our witness, and we may feel we have it polished, and we don't have it together. God has it together, and we need to be utterly dependent on Him. So I do want to share the word with you before I go on a tangent. And you say this has nothing to do with the Bible. Excuse me, it has everything to do with Jesus. Okay, so I want to share with you chapter 10, verse 14. Romans, book of Romans. And this is Paul writing to the church in Rome. He writes, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Witness. We are told to bear witness to those who may not know Jesus or enter into that relationship, that personal relationship. Don't let the word in the scripture preach set you off. It's not telling us we all need to become preachers. It means we all need to witness. We need to witness God working in our lives. We need to witness the, 
redeeming power of Jesus Christ. Let me share another scripture with you that describes how we should witness. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, Jesus is writing to his disciples, or Peter is writing to his disciples as he is trying to encourage them. It says, But in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks the reason for the hope that you have. That hope is in Christ. But do this with gentleness and respect. Witness. Be gentle. Show respect. You may be addressing someone with different or no spiritual witness, but when addressing our hope, our witness, it is best to use kids' gloves as addressing children ignorant to what they are learning. Also in Luke chapter 12, verse 12, for us not to fear or worry when we are questioned about our hope in Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will teach us what to say. That Christ's Holy Spirit will actually empower our witness in Jesus. All I'm really trying to say is God needs us to go out there to be his witness, to witness his love for us in Jesus Christ, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Our witness needs to be that of the thief on the cross, that while I am guilty, Lord, you are still innocent. I deserve all this punishment. You deserve none of this. Jesus, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. And through that belief and by saying these words, truly, we will be with him on paradise when we sleep in Christ. Our witness should be that not of a lamp under a bed or a light put under a bowl, but our witness should be that of a light in a window, a light to the whole world, the truth, the life, the way, a witness to our Lord Jesus Christ. So let the way we live be a witness also to Christ, to separate from all the rhetoric of the world, to give cheerfully, to love openly, and to always witness Jesus to all God's creatures. I'm going to keep it brief this morning. I've always heard that there's nothing wrong with a brief message. Everybody likes to go home and get lunch and think a lot about what they're having for lunch. But I do beg you, in this time that we're living today with our separation, our isolation, that you go out and be a witness, to be a worthy witness, to witness the transformation in your life. People need to know that transformation. People right now are lost without direction, and they will not have direction unless we are not that witness. So, I want to close in prayer, and I just want to lift our witness up before the throne. I ask God that you empower our witness by the Holy Spirit, that you lead us to people who need us to witness, that you take the fear out of our witness. I know that people, they try to rationalize your word, Father, they try to find scientific explanations for Christ walking on water. Maybe he was swimming and they've never seen somebody swim. No, Lord, I take your word as true. I stand by your word and I stand by you. So just, Lord, I ask that you empower our witness and I pray that we all go out and be witnesses of your love for us for that while we were still sinners, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, Christ to die on the cross for us. Thank you.